It's November 6th today, and I'm out here in a t-shirt. It's so nice and warm. Let's go look at the progress on the plant room. Today I finished my roof overhang. You can see it up there. So the next step, I'm gonna get the black tar out and paint that all black up there. Here's a look from on top of the scaffolding. So there's the roof overhang here. I've got my two sheets of plywood just just sitting there in place so I can work on painting the beams and that from above. Uh, there's the old plywood. I've got to cut that back to a beam. So I'll use part of it and then add a new section in. Got to stagger all my plywood spacing so the vertical seams here don't line up. So they're staggered like bricks. And I started to pull some of the fascia off over on the main roof there. There's a lot of foam and rot and crap and yeah so once I get that all off I can have a good look at it and run my flashing from the roof right up underneath there I'll have to fix any of the ends of those roof beams to make a nice solid fascia again and I've got a lot of fixing to do and I'm not sure about this side of the roof that has the metal on it if I should just take it all off and redo the entire roof all at once. I'm just not sure how well this is all sealed, so yeah. Anyway, for now I'm just going to do all my tar, my painting of the tar, which is a job I don't like, but it should dry quickly in this weather. So by tomorrow I can then move the plywood over and continue tarring and then at least I'll be ready then to screw some plywood panels down or nail them down and uh, yeah so it's progress for sure and it's a beautiful day so I've been uh, really lucky with this weather I moved the tarp too uh, I took all the my temporary roof off I've got the tarp is laying down in the plant room there so yeah, that was another thing I did today. So I've been busy. A lot of up and down the scaffolding, ladders. Yeah, pretty tiring work, but uh, I sleep well every night. I go to bed, I'm uh, really sore. I come in from doing the work when the sun starts setting and I don't even really go on YouTube anymore. I just am so tired at night that I eat and then I basically, maybe I have time to watch one or two bonsai videos. I don't get time to get to my comments or anything. And then I go to bed. And then I always wake up the next morning refreshed. A little tired and sore, it takes a while to get going, but, uh, but yeah, that's been my life for since the midsummer. Just tiring myself out every day, waking up and doing it all again. But it's it's going well. I'm enjoying it, working outdoors here. I'd rather be doing bonsai videos and running the bonsai channel, but uh, you know, this is getting done. We'll get it done and then life will be back to normal once again someday. And then I'll have to start building that larger greenhouse back there too. So yeah, the work never ends. I'm wondering if I should drive the truck now and go get the plywood for the roof and I need some uh, drip starters or drip edging, all that kind of stuff. I should, I should take a trip to Home Hardware and get all my supplies, drive the truck in a beautiful nice day. It is the next day and it is the most beautiful day today. It's sunny, it's warm t-shirt weather. So last night, I finished the day, I went to the hardware store and got three sheets of plywood in the truck. And I got the flashing, the drip edge that goes along the edge of the roofing. So here's two of my pieces of plywood here, half inch thick or 12 millimeters. And I did a lot of tarring up here. I'll go up and show you that. Here's my extension, my roof extension. I finished that all up. Got it all nicely nailed together, nice and secure. I 
have a lot of plywood panels up here. I'm uh, this is a new one I just got, so I put the black tar on it, and then I'll flip that over upside down. Uh, so that'll that'll help seal it because that'll be the cold side of the roof, and if I get any condensation, at least it won't soak into the wood and start rotting it away. So, yeah. So I'm going to do all the panels like that, all the plywood panels. I've tarred up all the beams as far as I could reach. I may have to touch up some. And so I'm going to start putting the plywood up today. I'll start on this bottom edge here and work my way up. And when I have it close to the old soffit and fascia there, I can tear that all apart and fix it and replace it. And then I'll do the final bit of roofing at the top there. And you can see the fascia over here is just thin plywood. So that all has to be taken apart eventually because I want it nice and solid because I want to put eaves troughs along this side of the building and down here to catch this. So, so just the one eaves trough down here isn't doing all the work. It, in a heavy rain, it just gets overwhelmed. You can't get enough water flowing down one eaves trough. So the two will help. And then I'll channel it all down to rain barrels down below here. So that is the plan. So I've got beautiful weather today. It's just fantastic. There's no bugs out. It's uh, There's no leaves to fall on my tar here. All the leaves are off the tree. And it's just perfect weather. If anything, I'll be too hot. So that's good. I've got to mix up my tar. You can see the tar down there, which is in the big tub. And then on my little tub that I mix it in, half tar and half of our saw, so paint thinners. And that makes a good mixture for painting on the roof. It dries in the sun here. This will be kind of tacky dry in maybe an hour, maybe two hours. So every time I walk by the truck, I look in the back seat and there's all those parts to go on. But it's gotta wait, gotta wait. Patience. It's getting towards the end of the day. I've still got a how much time do I have left? Oh, probably an hour, two hours maybe. Here's what I've been working on. I've got my first roof panel all fitted up and it's screwed down. And then uh, once everything's in place, I'll nail everything down. Just in case I have to move it or something. I've got this panel. I had to cut out a triangle section out of there to make it square. So I've done that and then I fitted this L-shaped panel. It's flipped over because I'm going to tar the undersides of these now. So that fits in over there. And this one fits up over here. And then I'll have a little bit of overhang to cut off a sheet to fit there. And then it'll be plywood all except the end here. So I've got to do all that fascia, fix all that up before I uh, fit the plywood right up in there. That gives me room to work in there. So yeah, this is uh, coming along really nicely. I'm happy with the progress. It was a lot of work maneuvering uh, plywood around all day today and cutting it. And... But yeah, it's coming along nicely. It's nice to be able to stand and lie down on your very own roof. I had an ice cream cone up here today, just sitting here on my roof in the nice sunshine. It's the next day now. It's a beautiful morning once again. I, uh, I'll show you what I got done at the end of yesterday. Here's what I got done yesterday. I got my two panels all tarred up, all the edges and everything. It takes quite a while to paint both the top of the panel, or which is actually the bottom, and around all the edges to get it all soaked in so it uh, seals all the edges against moisture. So the tops of them are still just the wood color and I'll leave it the wood color until the roof is all done. And if I have to scribe lines for shingles or laying out panels or something on top, I'll leave the wood. And then when it's all laid out, then I can paint the tar on the top. All my tropical trees are still outside. They've been out for, I think three or four days now. 
and really loving it. They're turning a nice green color. They look really healthy, getting sunshine every day. And uh, We're going to the orchard this morning. That's the first job for today. It'll only take about an hour and we're going to put the burlap bags on the cedar trees and we're going to finish painting the dormant oil on all the fruit trees. So we've got about half of them done already so today we'll finish off that task. Uh, I'll show you the the cedars or the Thuja occidentalis trees. They're getting their winter colors so you can see they're not so bright a green anymore. They're starting to go more of a um, a dull green, dark hunter green, or sometimes even a bronze color. So this one still looks fairly green, but it's changed. Here's another one here, and it's got more of a bronzy tint to it. Uh, this one also is getting quite bronze. My forest over here with the elephants, it maybe has the most change. You can see, let me just pick these leaves out of here. You can see it's kind of, it's almost an olive green color and it has that kind of bronzy color to it too. So that's their winter color. So that shows that they've gone dormant. So we're going to put that burlap on the cedar trees out in the orchard today because they should be dormant too. They, uh, it's late enough in the year that you can wrap them up. This warm weather is very unusual for this time of year. The larch forest is continuing to change color. The deep kind of yellow colors are going to more of a straw color now. I see there's been squirrels picking away at my landscape or birds. I think they're birds. I think I saw some blue jays here. But yeah, some of the needles are falling. Still looking quite beautiful though. Yeah, it's amazing the uh, seasonal changes of bonsai. It's t-shirt weather once again today. So let's head over to the community orchard and start today's work here in the bonsai zone. I'm here at the orchard for the second volunteer day of the year. And hopefully next year we'll have a lot more of them. So I've got all my supplies laid out here. I've got the dormant oil in a container, brushes and smaller containers so people can go out and paint the tree trunks and the branches and everything. And Laura is over here digging up raspberry bushes and she is going to start planting them around the trees in the spiral orchard between the trees. So you can see all the raspberries she has in her garden. And how many did you plant initially, Laura? Two. Two, and they've just spread. So they really like growing here in the full sun. So that'll be nice to get the understory planting started out in the spiral orchard. This is our garden plot where we start our small trees from seeds or whatever sources we can get. And last week we were out here, I pruned all our plum cherry trees down to a single leader. So I pruned a lot of the lower branches off and I'm trying to encourage them to grow kind of tall like a standard tree. So it took a lot of ruthless pruning. They were quite bushy down here. So a lot of pruning, but now they, they're starting to look like uh, more of an orchard type tree. Our Kentucky coffee trees have lost all their leaves, so they're ready to grow for next year. The birch tree there for the First Nations garden and the larches are losing all their needles. So yeah, that's all ready for next year. And I think it'll be quite exciting. I think these trees in this garden plot are gonna grow like crazy next summer. You can see the whole community gardens has gone from a sea of green plants to kind of the winter look, which is just beds of soil and a few remaining hardy vegetables growing. And here's Neil, and he's wrapping up the cedars for winter, tucking them into bed with their pajamas on. <laughs> How's it going, Neil? It's going great. What a that looks fantastic. Yeah, I think it'll. Uh, That's going to keep them really healthy for yeah. over the winter. Keep the frost off. Do you think we we should, probably should put stakes in beside them too? Do you think? I think so. Because yeah. they're all bundled up and. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if I can get some stakes. 
I don't know if there's going to be much of a wind problem though. That's well, I know there was last year. Right? Yeah, it seems to blow kind of across this way. Yeah, yeah. I think you're. Uh, you're Maybe if I can get that. some T posts or something, we could hammer those in and then yeah. tie it to that. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, because. Great idea. Now last year they were just planted, so they were kind of tippy anyway. But yeah, that's true. This year, hopefully, the roots have grown into the soil a bit and lengthen them better. Yeah, most of them anyway. <laughs> Where did you get the burlap from, Neil? He, uh, he told me to go and do this. So he, I guess he picked it up at Home Hardware. Oh, okay. Oh, that's awesome. Hopefully we have enough. Oh, he's what? got three rolls there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's looking really good. Here's all the volunteers working away out in the orchard, painting the dormant oil on the trees. Working their way around the spiral. Get notes. So this is Mark here. And Hello. Hello Mark. I know Mark from the KW Bonsai Society. And uh, he's painting the dormant oil on the trees. And the leaves haven't quite fallen off, but we're just kind of painting around them. And you know, it, a lot of them are falling off as we go because they're, yeah. they're still really, really loose. And if it gets on the leaves, it doesn't really matter too much because uh, they're going to fall off soon anyway. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not sure really if this good. is exactly the right way to do it, but I'm trying to make sure I get into any of the uh, the buds and the crevices end. and that. Yeah. And uh, just think where where would the insects lay their eggs? That looks good. That looks or really hide good. for winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And here's the raspberries down here that are getting planted between the trees. Amazing. Over here you can see the raspberries that are already planted. It's looking really good. That'll help define the spiral. Hopefully they'll multiply and we'll get this nice kind of hedge labyrinth around here be really cool this is Monica she was out helping last week hi Monica hi. <laughs> how's the painting going good oh that's awesome Denture or? Uh, we're starting the dormant oil on the outside and working our way in okay. and the raspberries are starting in the center and working their way out so, that we'll, okay. so we're social distancing that's a great idea okay uh, I didn't bring my gloves Ray will be back and he'll have okay because we're gonna plant garlic today oh good someone else is the lady over there is planting garlic. Yeah. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking the spiral wraps off. Okay. We're leaving them off. That tells you that the tree has been done with the dormant oil. And then, then at the end of the day, we'll put all the spiral wraps back on. Okay. Now what do we do about, like, yeah, leaves? I was going to ask because I see Just some of our guys there. Pretend they're not there. Paint around them. Just go for it. Okay. Yeah. It won't hurt them. They're almost ready to fall off anyway. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I'll start with the oil then. Please. Okay. Thanks, Shelly. We're going to have a little bit to go. <laughs> yeah. All the work is completed for today in the orchard. The cedar trees all have their burlap wraps on them. So next week we're going to stake them so they're not blowing over in the harsh winter wind. And I'll show you out in the orchard. Here's the spiral orchard now. So you can see it's defined a little more with these uh, raspberries planted here. It's going to be fantastic in the future as all this area fills out you know we'll have the trees the raspberries it'll be a real labyrinth kind of feeling to it all so just fantastic really happy with the progress today getting all the trees painted with their dormant oil the cedars wrapped and the understory planting in the spiral orchard a good day's work by all us people and volunteers so now it's back home where I'll start working on the roof again. It's getting towards the end of the day today and it was a short day of working on the plant room because we were in the orchard today. So here's a look inside. There's the top of the roof. So everything's covered except for that one section near the wall. There's the inside of the room. It's all tarred up on the underside. I still have a few beams to touch up, but uh, that can be done anytime. Yeah, so let's go up top and have a look now. Here's a look at the roof. The panels are just screwed in place, just a few screws to hold them up there. And I've got a whole bag of 
two and a half inch hot dip galvanized spiral nails here that I'll be doing all the nailing. So to get my, my lines, I've got a chalk line that I'm running on top of my roof joists here, running the chalk line down. This is the right one over here. And that'll allow me to nail them all down. So it'll secure them all in place, never to come off again, I hope. Yeah, so that's what I'll be doing for the rest of the day is lots and lots of nailing. Once again, it's just a fantastic day today. T-shirt weather in November. Unbelievable. All my tropicals are still outside and they'll be outside for at least two more days, maybe even three. I think with all this good weather, I'm getting a little sunburnt too, but uh, I'm trying to stay out of the sun, but yeah, it's just impossible up on our roof. Last night, I went to bed at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. I was so tired and I slept through right till 7 p.m. in the morning of the next day. So I got 12 hours sleep. Ah, I was so tired, but I feel really good today. I feel really good today after all that sleep. So it did me good. Another day is about to start and it looks like a beautiful morning once again. I left off yesterday by nailing down the roof and it's coming along really nicely. I just have a few rows at the very end left to do. And then I can start on working on the soffit up here. I was kind of worried about putting roof vents on the roof up there. I thought, oh, I don't really want to cut into my roof. So I thought what I'm going to do, I was going to have that dead space, sort of a mini attic at the peak of the room on the inside. I'll put a kind of a, like a false ceiling there. And I'm going to put a gable vent on the very end here so it'll vent. There'll be a, a screened in vent underneath the overhang there that'll vent out that attic section to the outside air. So I think that'll keep it all nice and waterproof so I don't have to cut holes in my roof up there for vents. So yeah, I'll be doing that eventually and putting the venting underneath the, uh, the soffit there too. So the air goes in along the top of the roof and then vents out my gable vent here. Here's the bonsai area early in the morning. It's about, well, it's almost seven o'clock now, I guess. So what I do, I keep all my, all the tropicals I can fit in the greenhouse, which is heated overnight. It keeps them really nice. And then in the daytime, when it starts to warm up, usually around 10 o'clock in the morning, I bring them outside onto the benches. And then at nighttime, I put them back in the greenhouse. And that keeps them growing and happy and yeah, they seem to do really well with that routine. And it doesn't take long to put them away. I think there's about maybe six trees that I take out and put back in every day. And then when the temperatures start, you know, dropping in the daytime, I'll just leave them in the greenhouse. I won't be bringing them out onto the benches. The color in the larch forest changes every day. It's kind of getting more of the uh, orangey straw color. Still very, very beautiful though. Love it. You can see there's more and more needles drop onto the forest floor every day too. I was kind of worried about this fern because this fern just started growing in a pot in one of my tropical trees indoors. And I wasn't sure how hardy it was. So I've left it outside and it's seen minus three degrees. So three degrees below zero or freezing. And uh, so far it looks fine. It looks untouched. So it must be a fairly hardy fern because there's no damage from the cold weather so far. My bald cypress here, it's starting to get fall colors. If you look down here, you can see the reds and the oranges. The tips are still green, but uh, definitely getting its fall colors. It grew really well this year. It'll get pruned back this winter once it's dormant and we'll get it ready for going once again next year. You can see the silhouette of my American elm here. And it's, it's got a long way to go, this tree, but you know, it's slowly getting there from 
a tree I dug up in the front garden with very poor roots. It's slowly coming along. It's looking more tree-like and more elm-like. My small leaf linden has just about lost all its leaves. Yeah, they're just falling off as soon as you touch them. So that'll be bare soon for the winter. It had nice fall colors. It flowered this year. Yeah, it was a really uh, nice tree to have. It has a long, long way to go. I'm trying to thicken up this one side of it to make sort of a, more of a normal looking tree, I guess. Keeping this cascading part of it as a first branch or a kind of multi-trunk tree. So eventually I'll be simplifying this side down to one or two trunks, picking my best ones, and the rest are just growing as sacrifice branches. So I'm just letting this whole section of the tree grow unrestricted. And then once it gets up to a decent size down here, then I'll start the pruning process. My Manitoba maples, or box elder maples, have lost all their leaves, and they remind me of a, a really ancient old tree, like maybe some of the old oaks that you see in England, or that, and yeah, I think they have a lot of age, age in them, and they are fairly old. So, that'll be fun refining these into the future seeing what I can make out of these box elder maples. I'm back up here on the roof and I've decided that I am going to take off the rest of this metal part of the roof here and fix the uh, fascia up there to mount an eaves trough. I, uh, I initially thought I'd put a metal roof on here because I thought the snow would slide off more easily and it, that wasn't the case. With this low slope roof, it didn't make any difference. And what did make a difference is I would go up in winter to clear the snow off, and I was scared to death on the metal roof because if you get any ice or wetness, it becomes really slippery and dangerous. So I didn't go up on the metal roof at all. You could just feel with your hand how slippery it was. So. That's one reason I've decided not to go with a metal roof anymore because I can't get up here to clean it in winter. And uh, yeah, it just gets, it's too scary. So I'll stick with a more of a traditional asphalt roof, maybe just the uh, big panels like they use on flat roofs, sort of a textured, uh, you know, tar paper type thing. Uh, what do they call it? Roofing felt or something like that. Really heavy duty. Sort of like they use for the water and ice shield, which I'll be putting on the front part anyway. So I think that's what's on it over here. And it's a really good grippy surface and seals really well. So that's the finish I'm going to put on the roof. I'm not going to put the steel on. It's just too slippery and dangerous. You can see all my chalk lines here. There's another row. And another row over here. Yeah, so they were really helpful for doing all the nailing. Last summer, we got this part of the roof done. And over the winter, I noticed some leaking inside. And I thought, well, maybe it's because they haven't finished. Maybe it's leaking from the old roof down. And maybe it's just that it wasn't all done yet. And then I was thinking, oh, I don't know. So anyway, um, over the winter, we had to have a row of buckets along here because water was coming in from up top here. Um, yeah, and raining down into these buckets and quite a bit. And I thought, well, how can that be? So that's, that area is right here where the, uh, that new work joins to the old house. And I thought, hmm, okay. So I, uh, I went up today. Yeah, I, I had a look. I started taking apart everything that they had built in this area. And I think I found what the major problem is. 
So over here, all the roofing material, which is good material, they ran it to this edge and then kind of overlapped it up on this box section here. Some of it, and some of it just ran out to the edge and ended. So you can see all the plywood in this area is wet. And all the screw holes, all the screws that were holding these plywood panels on are all rusty. So they've obviously seen a lot of moisture. And you know, over that one year, they've gone quite rusty. So inside the box section, it looks quite dry. So I don't think it's leaking down the seam from the old house. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's running in there. There's no ceiling there at all. Yeah, maybe that is it. So maybe this box section is filling up with water and then it's running down the wall there. I think that's what it is, yeah. Because if you look up here, there's a big hole I can fit my hand in here. So any water would pool run down that hole down here and down and leak down that wall so so anyway what I'm going to do I've got to remove this whole box section flash in the wall properly running my roofing material right out to the wall and all my flashing up the wall and then I'll add the box section in and that would be just to stop you know, major snow drifts and that from getting into this area, which is kind of, you know, you get, if you don't have this blocked off, you get all this snow and ice that collects under this overhang and, which isn't good. So I think, you know, if I box this section off, it'll just be all the roofing and the ceiling will be done underneath. And this is just like a cover that'll be in place just to stop snow drifting underneath there because it, it kind of melts when it hits that warm wall and then you get problems with it running down the the seams so yeah that's my plan get the, rid of this box section finish the roof as if it was never going to be here and then put the box section back in place and have it so it's you know it's just there to keep snow and leaves and stuff from blowing underneath under here. That was another thing. I used to get huge piles of wet leaves collecting underneath the overhangs of the old roofs of these, you know, the main roof of the house. So it would collect. You'd get huge piles of wet leaves under here. So, yeah, that's the plan. Take it all apart. Get all the roofing done. So the roofing, the covering, like the asphalt, runs right across up the other wall. It's all flashed in properly. And then the box section's added on top. Just kind of fits in place and keeps the major snow and leaves out. You know, I could even put in a screened in section here. It doesn't have to be fully boxed in. Because, you know, you want it to breathe so it doesn't trap moisture in there. So that's the plan. I thought I would show you the workmanship, or lack of it, of the guys that were doing the roof. So first of all, this is that boxed in section. And the beams aren't vertical. You can see that's the ones on a funny angle. The rest they got fairly straight. The bottom plate is one, two, three pieces, four pieces. Nothing's lined up. You can see the gap there. Uh, the top here I don't know what they're doing here. They're piecing blocks together to do something. I don't know. It's just nothing up top to frame it in. So the plywood was just running up, touching here and not being sealed at all. So any water running down the roof comes down around the edge and then on the inside of the plywood and then down the huge gap between the roof and the the wall there so and then the cover plate they made for you know boxing this section in you can see there's one little triangle down at the bottom here fitted down there there's one fairly major 
piece here and then there's all these little pieces that they cocked in and it was just a mess instead of making it one nice sheet of plywood with a nice framed in they just put together crap it's just unbelievable it's just it drives me crazy the lack of you know pride and workmanship in this is just oh, I shake my head you know things like this where you've got shitty blocks and spacers and crap and oh, up here they had some blocks screwed up here which you know was all right but it's not screwed anything solid and it just you know and here's the problems you got a rotted end there not fixed just left rotted they just you know flash around it never solving the original problems they just cover it up yeah so anyway I'm uh, glad I took this all apart because I know for a fact this would have leaked every year and helped rot out my roof it was already all the plywood here was already soaking wet when I moved all the flashing so and it hasn't rained for four or five days so that would have rotted out in probably four or five years that would have been you know big hole rotted holes in my ceiling and the leaks would have got worse and you know their solution was to put crap in here and just caulk and oh drives me nuts they use so much caulking instead of doing things right anyway so we'll get it fixed while the weather's good I can work away at the roof and uh, yeah get it all watertight sealed up done properly with some craftsmanship I hope it's almost the end of another day and so here's what I've got done. I took apart all that structure that was there all along here. So it's just the, you know, the beams from the roof sticking out. I've got to replace a lot of the ends. So the skinny ones over there are just tacked onto the original roof beams. They've been cut off short for some reason. And some of these have to be fixed up. So I'm just tarring all that area before I cover it all up. I think for the first time I'll flash it really well in there so it can't run down between the roof and the wall. I'll flash it right up to the top which was never really sealed in very well up there. Yeah, so these, these original beams for the roof aren't in the greatest of shape they're a little brittle they've had multiple multiple nails and screws put in them as the fascia is being replaced over and over so I may have to do some reconstructive work on those you know I might have to build up a plate each side of them and uh, really make them nice and strong because the plan is to put the east trough along here yeah so today I'm gonna finish this tiring up. There's, there's the sun, it's setting, I've uh, maybe got half an hour. I've gotta put my trees back in the greenhouse and get this all tarred up tonight so it'll be dry for tomorrow. And then I'll start all this reconstructive work on the uh, ends of the roof beams. You can see these ones here. The original roof beam is here and it's just been cut off for some reason and these thin little pieces added on the end so yeah we'll get that fixed up the other thing I've been working on today is removing all this ice and water shield that was stuck down on the roof I thought while the temperature is warm today it'll be the easiest to peel it off and it, it's been going fairly well I still have some down there and this patch up here but uh, I've got most of it off and it's hard work it's hard you have to get an edge going and then you pull and pull but it's getting there and that way it'll be a nice surface a nice flat surface to put all the new roofing on 
so it won't get all you know it won't be bumpy these transitions and I might have a chance of water getting under there who knows probably not but uh, it'll just make a nice flat surface for the new roof to go on it is another day and uh, this is the last of the warm days it's uh, going to be 21 degrees Celsius today which is really really nice and then uh, it's supposed to rain tonight and then cool down a high of I think 10 tomorrow so here's a look inside the room and you can see the gaps you're supposed to leave an eighth inch gap between all the plywood panels that allows for expansion and contraction with the changing temperatures so here's the roof I've got a lot of the work done on it uh, let's go up and I'll show you what's going on up top here so here's a look at the roof now you can see it's all ready to put the black tar on so I want to get this layer of tar on the roof while it's warm out sunny and there's no rain so that's what I'm going to do next is get this all tarred up it is another day today uh, last night we got rain so you can see I have the the tarp on the roof I'll show you that from above I had to use two tarps there's a look at the tarps on the roof so the the silver one almost fit to the end but not quite so I had to put a second up I kept the rain out of the room um, I did get all my my roof my sheeting all tarred up black so when I get the tarps off I'll show you that I didn't get time to film it last night because I had to get the tarps up and yeah get ready for the rain so today started out warm it's supposed to cool down during the day and we're going to get into the cool weather coming still nice but cooler so this might be you know my last week to work on the roof so I got to get it all finished this week for sure all the trees on the outside benches just got a good watering last night we got about three or four hours of rain so I can put those all in the basement now I'm just leaving them outside until they get some morning Sun here and then once the Sun kind of goes behind the pine tree here it goes into shade for the afternoon so I'm just letting them get a little more Sun the tropicals out in the benches and then I'll put them down in the basement and that'll probably be the last time they can go out for this year the large forest is in its full fall colors it's straw kind of colors so you can see the color of it there underneath you get that nice yellow glow yeah so really really cool and you can see if I touch it the needles they start falling off so I would say in another yeah, you know, three or four days this trees these trees will be bare they'll be I've lost all their needles my tropical trees in the greenhouse are just doing fantastic they're just thriving in there so that's good to see they'll stay out here in the greenhouse until the weather starts getting kind of below well below freezing I'll put that insulated tarp on the greenhouse and we'll try and keep them out well until I get the plant room done I've got good weather ahead in the forecast so I can get the tarps off the roof and get my final roofing material up and everything sealed it's the middle of the afternoon now and I'll show you what I've been working on today I have been flashing and no not that kind of flashing adding flashing all around the roof perimeter so I've got the piece cut for the end there that's all fitted up I've got another piece tucked under there and this piece will be very similar to that I've got to cut the top down then tuck it up underneath and then there's some blocking in the end I've got to do something special for that area and yeah it's getting there the flashing then I've got to add all my blocking in that for the fascia so I thought you know I'll start with this get all the flashing in place and then I can work on the fascia and the, uh, the soffit just won't be there there's just not enough room for it so I'll just have to run the fascia right down to the roofing so I'll want to get all my roofing in place before I fit that fascia board up 
you know, I'll have to make all kinds of reinforcements and stuff. So, yeah, a lot of work to go doing all this kind of work. But, uh, yeah, making progress, though. The temperature's been getting colder and colder throughout the day. And I've been getting more and more clothes on as the day goes on. Um, so, yeah, tonight all the uh, tropical trees that are out on the benches will have to go back down into the basement. And I've just... I don't know, I'll have to start that soon. The sun's starting to get low on the horizon there. So all these trees will be fine inside the greenhouse tonight. But uh, I definitely have to move all the tropicals, which are over here. I've got, you know, I've got my asparagus fern, my yucca forest, my acacia trees. Yeah, lots of, all my citrus ones, yeah. So that'll keep me busy. It'll probably take me, as I said before, it usually takes me about an hour and a half to get them all back in the basement. I just that they're so hard to fit. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be finishing that flashing and then uh, moving all my trees inside. The skies are darkening. It's almost the end of the day. So I'll show you in the basement. I got all my trees tucked away. This will probably be the last time they go out until spring. Uh, I don't expect the weather to get any warmer. Uh, we had, I think it was four record days in a row of high temperatures. Finishing off yesterday with a high of 21 degrees Celsius, which is pretty well summer weather. It was amazing. Um, but today it's dropping down to... Uh, just above freezing tonight, so all the trees are in, safe and sound. And yeah, that'll be it, I think, for the year. So the next stage for these trees will be to move them up to the plant room when that's done. And I'll show you the progress on the plant room. Here's the top of the roof. And you can see I've got all the flashing is roughed in place. I haven't uh, attached it yet, but it's all cut and fitted. So it's looking pretty good. Got a few details to go on it still, but uh, I'm getting closer to being able to put my roofing material down. I'm going to put the drip edges all the way around the, uh, the roof. And then I think I'm ready to put the roofing material on, which might be that, you know, long strips of that uh, ice and water shield, just overlapping it and building it up to the top of the roof there. So yeah, getting, getting closer to having a, a finished roof. That brings us to the end of the video. This week's update, I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>